Good morning to you. This is Talk Breakfast with me, Julia Hartley Brewer. It's coming up to 9.17. Delighted to welcome the Home Secretary, Suella Bravman, live to the show from outside the Home Office. Good morning to you. Good morning, Julia. Good, thank you so much for joining us. Lots to talk about. I know you want to talk about Meta and online encryption, but I do want to talk about Net Zero first up. Major announcement we understood. Supposed to be coming later from the Prime Minister, but leaked yesterday about watering down of Net Zero commitments. Although the Prime Minister says he's still committed to Net Zero. Um, do you welcome uh, that change in, uh, in the policy? Well, the Prime Minister will be setting out more detail about this issue in the coming days. And I urge my colleagues to hold fire and listen to what he has to say. But what is clear is that we remain committed to delivering net zero by 2050 in line with our international agreements. We've achieved a huge amount when it comes to fighting climate change in the last decade or so. We are seen as a world leader. But it's also right that we take a pragmatic and proportionate approach. And fundamentally, we're not going to save the planet by bankrupting the British people. Well, it sounds very good, except if you're still committed to net zero, that is what you're committed to. The Climate Change Committee, unelected, unaccountable body with immense power in this country, has said it'd be a trillion pounds. Uh, the uh, national grid reckoned a three trillion pound cost. You can't achieve net zero even with the original policies. If you're going to water down you know, the sale of new petrol and diesel cars and gas boilers and, 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 and energy efficiency and all of that, realistically, you're not going to achieve it at all unless you have a massive, massive cost elsewhere. So it, it is going to impoverish our country. It is going to be unaffordable. And yet the government is still committed to it. Well, I think the Prime Minister needs to be applauded for taking a very pragmatic approach and taking into account the circumstances as we find them today. We are facing cost of living challenges. We need to really prioritise economic growth. And of course, inflation is having an effect on household budgets. So it's right that we reflect and review and we make sure that these goals are, are achievable and importantly sustainable. OK, well, we'll see. Um, and again, most people are thinking he needs to go much further on this issue. But um, let's also talk about the NHS strikes happening today. Some of the most uh, uh, widespread strikes uh, in the NHS history, both junior doctors and consultants. We just spoke to one of them uh, outside one of the central London hospitals out on strike. We're going to see more of that in the beginning of October during the Tory party conference, indeed. Um, do you think these are politically motivated strikes? Well, I, I, I think these strikes are unacceptable. I don't think that they should be continuing. The government has uh, accepted the Independent Pay Review Board's recommendations and awarded a pay increase to junior doctors. Consultants earn, on average, about £130,000, far more than the average British worker. And ultimately, patients are going to lose out by not getting their treatment, not getting their appointments, and that's something we don't want to see. So I urge uh, doctors to stand down from their uh, strike action and get back to work. Um, do, you, do you think it's the, the BMA's fault or do you think it's the, your colleague, the Health Secretary, Stephen Barclay's fault that um, they, they've not met up for months and months on end to discuss this when patients are suffering? There are patients today who won't get treatment they urgently need because there hasn't been anyone talking around the table. Whose fault is that? I think these strikes are inexcusable and there's no good reason for them. As I said, the government so you blame has your colleagues issued and agreed to a pay rise. I, I think the government has been in negotiations, has talked to the unions. They've, we've the health secretary hasn't met for them junior for months. They haven't met once over the summer. There's been extensive negotiations over uh, the last year or so, over the time that these strikes have been threatened and ultimately a 35% pay increase, which is what the, the BMA is demanding, is totally unfeasible and unreasonable. I think most people would agree with that. Okay, can I ask you about inflation figures as well? We saw expectation that inflation would go up a little bit due to oil price rises. In fact, it has uh, gone down uh, not very much, just, just a little bit uh, today um, to 5.5%. Sorry, 7 .5%. Um, uh, do you welcome that? Does that mean you're going to be hitting your the targets and indeed the pledge from the Prime Minister earlier this year in terms of uh, halving inflation? We're getting inflation down much, lo much lower than yes. it has been. It, this is good news and uh, it's 
defied expectations and it shows that the Prime Minister's plan to halve inflation is working, taking a prudent approach to the public finances, resisting, for example, these public sector pay demands of 35% uh, increases, uh, working with the Bank of England on interest rates and supporting householders with uh, £90 billion packages on uh, energy costs. So I think that holistic package is demonstrating that it is working and we've got to stick to the plan. We've also got to confirm that the UK economy is growing uh, uh, and uh, we need to stick to this plan and uh, to, to halve inflation. OK, well, we'll see uh, with that if the Bank of England plays ball on that when it comes to interest rates, won't we? Um, let's also talk about uh, your criticism of the tech giant Meta. They own you know, Facebook and, uh, and WhatsApp and a huge part of our lives and have been for a long time. Uh, you've criticised them after they failed to provide assurances they would protect children from online paedophiles uh, by we're planning uh, effectively to roll out end-to-end -end encryption across all of their services. What are your concerns there? Well, we're facing a crisis, to put it simply, when it comes to the safety of children online. Right now, we are arresting in the UK about 800 uh, perpetrators of online child sexual abuse a month. We're safeguarding 1,200 children a month. And these online paedophiles are using, in the main, Facebook Messenger and Instagram Direct to carry out their sick behavior. They're grooming children, they're encouraging them to behave in a sexual way, in an indecent way. They're filming them, they're uploading that material and they're sharing it. It's child abuse and I've met with victims and survivors of this online child sexual abuse and it's devastating to them and their families. And for parents out there, what Meta is proposing, uh, i.e. end-to-end encryption without safety measures, will have a devastating impact on the law enforcement's ability to identify this kind of behaviour, investigate it and, and stop it. And, and, yet we and know so that, I'm calling on Meta. So we know that the vast majority of these crimes, even when they are available, easy to find online, are not being dealt with by the police and are not being prosecuted. And even when people are found to have got these images, they're not even being sent to prison. Well, I, I, I dispute that, uh, actually. I mean, I went down to Kent Police yesterday to meet their specialist online safety unit, and we've got tech experts, we've got extensive investigators who can gain access to criminal behaviour online, uh, attempts and actual uh, instances of child abuse online, and they can inter interrupt and arrest these perpetrators. I've got to say, it's shocking to... To, to tell your viewers, but 80% uh, of those online child sexual abusers generally commit in-person and yep. contact sexual abuse as well. There's a very close connection between the two types of abuse, and this is not something that can happen to other people's children. This is affecting all strata of society, and we are seeing a proliferation in this kind of behaviour on Facebook Messenger and Instagram Direct. Currently, we can have access to that criminal behaviour and we can arrest it. Okay. However, what Meta is proposing will provide a safe haven for paedophiles. OK, well, let's come back to one other issue as well, being the news a lot. The cost of migrate Channel Migrants Hotel costs up from £6 million a day, according to the Home Office figures, to £8 million a day. Where's this going to end? Well, it's an unacceptable situation and that's why we need to stop the boats. Uh, when it comes to the hotel costs, that's why we are rolling out large sites across the country which will house thousands of migrants and ultimately uh, reduce our dependency on hotels. But it also demonstrates the fundamental and pressing need to deliver our well-beating Rwanda partnership so that we can detain people and then we can remove them swiftly to a safe country. And it's that's not, it's not world-beating, not a single person's been sent. I believe it's well beating. When I talk to international partners, they, uh, I'm, I'm blown away by the interest that um, interior ministers around the world are showing to me in what we're doing with Rwanda. Many countries in Europe and across the Atlantic are grappling with a global migration crisis. Uh, they've yet to come up with sustainable solutions. Our, our agreement with Rwanda, I believe, is a meaningful solution. We are being held up in the courts right now. We need to wait for the litigation 
to play out. We await the judgment from the Supreme Court later this year, but I'm confident in the lawfulness of our agreement, and I believe that we will be able to get flights off to Rwanda very soon. Uh, and once we are able to do that, we will have a deterrent. Okay. We will be able to send the message to people smugglers, to those illegal migrants who are choosing to come here, that they will not be able to stay in the UK if they come here illegally. OK, Home Secretary Swella Bradman, really appreciate you taking the time to talk to us there from the Home Office. Thank you very much indeed for that. I'm done for another day.